Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I'm going to talk about how a suspected gas leak led me to discover a fault in one of my two-port zone valves. It all started about a week ago when I was sitting on the couch watching TV, and I noticed out of the corner of my eye that my smart meter was showing me some gas usage. I knew that the heating was completely turned off and that the boiler wasn't being used to heat any hot water, so it was a bit unusual that there was going to be some usage registered. Before going to bed, I checked that reading again and it had risen from 1.6 kilowatt hours to a little over 2 kilowatt hours, so I started to worry that we might have a leak of some description. I looked at my octopus uh, history and I could see that for the past couple of days since the weather had gotten warm enough to turn the heating completely off that there had been some usage reported very small amounts but something was using gas or we had some gas leaking I went out to the garage immediately to take a look I couldn't smell any gas but to be on the safe side I turned the gas off at the mains I shut the handle just in case we did have a leak. Following morning, I checked the smart meter reading again and no usage had been registered uh, for that day. So that sort of ruled out there being a problem with the meter or just some irregularity uh, on Octopus's side. And with that, I immediately rang Cadent and they arranged a first responder to come out and take a look. About 40 minutes later, the Cadent man pulled up, a very nice man named Matt, and Matt proceeded to go through the entire house. He checked every room, upstairs and downstairs, to make sure that there was no gas. He then checked the meter, and he checked everything between the, the gas valve and the boiler. Everything is in the garage, so it's all on one wall, and it, it's only about three meters apart. So he was able to thoroughly check that, and he confirmed there were no gas leaks, which left us scratching our heads as to why the meter was recording usage. Now he asked me at this point to double check that it wasn't the thermostat, and I sort of explained my bespoke heating control system and that I had deactivated it at a certain level so that even if the temperatures did drop down low, the system wouldn't ever open either of the valves so there should be no call for heating whatsoever just to, to kind of demonstrate to him i opened up a home assistant and i took a look at the ems data coming from the boiler and to my surprise i could see that the boiler was in fact firing now it wasn't firing for very long but as you can see from this graph it was firing a lot um I mean, it looks like it was kind of going every, must have been every hour, every hour and 10 minutes, but it was definitely firing a lot, which it shouldn't have been doing. It shouldn't have been firing at all for, for some of these periods. But you can see, like, that, that's a pretty normal period there where it's running. So that would have been doing the underflow heating, maybe. But after that, it was essentially off. But I can see something was telling the boiler to fire. As he began packing to leave, Matt made one final suggestion, which was to turn on my boiler's eco mode. He said it was a long shot, but maybe the boiler's optimizations were causing it to fire so frequently. He also checked my boiler's flow temperature to check it was below 55, which was brilliant to see before he headed off. I checked the boiler a few hours later, and despite turning the eco mode on, it was still firing in the same way with those short, sharp bursts. This meant I had a problem somewhere between the boiler and the control relays. As it was the middle of the week, in the middle of the day, I couldn't investigate any further at the time, so I just turned the boiler off at the wall. It's now the weekend and I have time to investigate the problem, so I'm gonna go down into the garage now and start at the boiler. Right, so I've open the front of the boiler and what we can see is we have two uh, feeds coming in here we've got a, a call for heat and a call for hot water and then we have our live and neutral so if we put the fluke meter onto the live and neutral 
you can hopefully see we'll register the 230 volts. If we put that onto the switched for the hot water, we get AC but there's no voltage. It's very, very low. And if we check the heating, we're actually getting voltage. So that means that the system is calling the boiler for heat. So let's take a closer look at the wiring loom. Now the wiring loom is what connects the valves, <coughs> the relays, etc. back to the boiler. So I showed you on the boiler we had a switched live for the heating and a switched live for the hot water. And they correspond to the black and grey cables up there. This cable here runs off to the boiler. So what will happen with these uh, two port valves is the Shelly relays here this one controls the radiators and this one down here controls the underflow heating and what happens is when they engage they send a signal through or well, they send live through these kind of beige cables and these beige cables are connected to both of the valves so they will run off and they will energize the valve and the valve will actually open and once the valve is open, there's a little switch inside the valve and that will send power back through these orange cables which then get picked up by the appropriate uh, switch for heating or hot water. So we're only interested in the heating one at the moment, so that's the black one here. And as you can see we have two cables going in uh, to this terminal and that's because we can have a switching signal from this valve for the radiators or a switching signal from this valve, which is the underflow heating. Now everything is powered on at the moment, so I have to be very, very careful about what I'm touching. Um, don't mess around with electricity. If you're doing any of this yourself, be very, very careful. So what I want to check, so I know that my two valves should be closed, and we can test that by kind of pushing the little actuator here, and that won't move. So that would go all the way over to it. And the same for this one. They're kind of pushed. Now I can push them, um, but they'll reset into their original position. So that tells me that both of those valves are currently closed. And I can confirm that by checking that there's no power going to either of these kind of beigey cables. So if I put one end against the neutral and I put my fluke into either of these, I get a continuity test, which is correct, but I get no voltage. So there's no voltage reading on any of those. So that tells me that my two Shelly relays are indeed closed. I can confirm that again by checking the actual relay themselves. And I can test the switched end of the relay. Uh, in that case there, that's given me no voltage. It's given me, again, continuity, but no, no voltage. And this one down here is exactly the same. Now it gets more interesting because if I then test from the neutral to the actual switch wire, I am reading voltage. And I shouldn't be reading any voltage because the valves are both closed. So there should be, so the little micro switch inside the valves should be open and there should be no power flowing. Now I'll take, I'll bring you in um, a bit closer to this particular box down here because I have done a little bit of diagnostics already and I know that this valve is fine but it's still this valve down here that's causing me the problem. So we've nicely zoomed in here on this control component and what I've done is on my multimeter I've set it to this continuity test, which is usually for resistance, um, but I've set it to that, and so that means it'll make a little beep when there's continuity detected. And I've removed the, the switch live from uh, the WAGO connector, and I've also removed the permanent live. That's the grey cable. So if my hunch is correct, and I connect these two cables together, this should show continuity which it does. So we're actually reading a resistance across that. Now, 
that shouldn't happen because the valve, which I can't see in the shot, if I, if I just pan the camera, and I pan this is up, Steven Spielberg doesn't have to put up with this. So that's the valve, and you can see I can push the switch, and then it will return into its normal, into its closed position. Let me um, turn that annoying beep off. So there's something definitely wrong in here. So I'm going to take the cover off this valve and see if we can't have a look at the micro switch. Okay, so I've double checked again. I've isolated all the power and we should be able to get a screwdriver in under this somehow. Hopefully my arm isn't horribly blocking the camera. So I'll twist that. Now, I've never opened one of these before. So I'm not really sure what to expect. Uh, all right, the cover just slides off. That's our earth. Okay. Now, so that's the guts of it. Um, I'll unhook the camera from. Yes, it did go horribly over. It stopped recording. So let me. I'll, I'll zoom the camera out, and we can kind of take a closer look. Okay, so you can see the various cables. You can see there's like a spring in there. But what I've spotted is this. If you just follow that screwdriver, that little guy there, I think, is the micro switch. Now, having an electrician as a father and being quite a tinkerer as a child, I used to use those little micro switches to do oh, for various contraptions and bits and bobs. So, that looks like it. I can't... Uh, now the camera is struggling to really see in there, isn't it? Uh, just bear with me, viewers, whilst I try to figure out how to get this to focus. Right, that's a bit better. Um, essentially, that's the, the macro, but hopefully you can kind of see. So it seems like that's the switch there. Oh, so I've jiggled it around a little. And if I now put my multimeter back, ah, oh, there's no beep. So let me try and click that now. Uh, where was it? Hey, okay, so hopefully you can hear the beep. And I think I've, I think I've fixed it. So I wonder if there was just a bit of dust or dirt um, involved. Let me switch back to the regular camera. There we go. So I'll put all this back together now uh, and power it back up and hopefully our switch, switch call for heat, sorry, should be fixed. Okay, so I've closed up the valve and I've put everything back uh, in terms of the wiring around the relay. I've put the power back on and if I now test for live uh, here, we should see that there is none which there isn't, which is great. So that's, so that's solved the call for heat um, coming from the uh, stuck switch here, which is brilliant. So that's exactly what I would have expected now. And it means that the boiler won't fire as intermittently like it was doing. So that's another heating issue solved through a little bit of detective work. So I'm very proud of myself right now for having resolved that by myself. So I learned a little bit more about uh, the valves and the wiring, so it's helped kind of reinforce some of how I thought they worked. So now I have a much better idea of how, again, of how all this hangs together. If you have any questions, please use the comments below. I'm happy to kind of take you into any more detail about what I've run through. If you found this interesting, please do press that like button. Uh, and if you'd like to follow along, uh, please do subscribe. And otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.